So today I wanted to have a look at the Great Washington Witch Hunt. And what exactly is that? Well, the House has recently passed a measure to identify neo-Nazis in the military and law enforcement, and also white supremacists as well. And obviously I don't have a problem with that. However, I don't necessarily think that that's exactly what they're doing this for. So let's have a look at this um, article from the Washington Examiner that explains what the bill is. The House added an amendment to the annual defense authorization legislation on Wednesday intended to combat white supremacy and neo-Nazi activity in the military. Um, the amendment requires the FBI, the Department of Homeland Security and the Pentagon to publish a report analyzing white supremacist and neo-Nazi activity within the ranks of the military and federal law enforcement, so police as well. Um, and present ways to prevent it. The amendment, opposed by Republicans and sponsored by uh, Representative Brad Schneider, a Democrat for Illinois, passed in a 218 to 208 party line vote and was added to the House version of the National Defense Authorization Act. Um, I mean, this is obviously a trap. Yes, I, of course it is. No... I mean, at least the Republicans sniffed a rat here. Yeah, I mean, we've all seen the level of things the Democrats will label as white supremacy. I mean, I'm going me, to get onto that. Don't you worry. It's just like you should turn up on time as white supremacy. So the whole police force has to go. <laughs> surely. <laughs> oh, oh. To be fair, turning up on time. If we applied that to lots of Democrats, you turn up on time to the vote. Oh, sorry. White supremacy. You gotta leave. You've got to leave. Sorry, lass. Uh, I mean, just yeah, end actually. democracy itself. Hmm, let's expand this. <laughs> so, um, I'm, I'm directly quoting here. Such behaviour, such extremism, is a threat to us all in all segments of society. There is no reason to believe that our military is any different, Schneider said on the House floor on Wednesday. Telling up on time must end. <laughs> <laughs> Republicans, such as Re Representative Andy Biggs, uh, Republican for Arizona, oppose the amendment, arguing that it is intrusive and denigrates law enforcement. Yes, obviously. Um, and I'm quoting from him directly. This amendment attempts to create a problem where none exists by requesting investigations into law enforcement and the armed services for alleged rampant white supremacists or uh, white national sympathies. Yes, yeah. I, mean, I mean... It's just not there. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you people, how you define white supremacists and white nationalism is, is crazy, so we're not giving you any leeway in that. Mm -hmm. I think that's the right thing to do here. Yes. Um, obviously, I, I know this is a bit unnecessary, but I disavow... <laughs> actual white nationalism? Yes. Yeah. Ne Neo-Nazis and actual white nationalists, white yes. <laughs> I know, stunning and brave, but yes, it has to be done these days, unfortunately. Um, but yes, as I alluded to earlier, I do not believe this is being used for the reasons stated. I'm Maybe I'm cynical, but I, I have a strong feeling that I'm not being cynical here, and that actually there is going to be some underhanded wording here that is going to push well beyond what they've listed here. So, to my eyes at least, um, questions such as, who gets to define what the forbidden thoughts and behaviours are should be on everyone's lips. I mean, that is where the real power lies, doesn't it? And how do you identify these people? I mean, they don't, they're don't they not going to walk into their office and just go, see Kyle, are they? <laughs> I mean, you're going to have to look for specific veiled behaviours because they're not going to be explicit about it. Yeah, I think it's Maryland. I, I don't know if every state did this, but I know they banned clan members from being cops. For the obvious reason <laughs> that they can't be fair with all citizens. And it's like, okay, well, Seems that's reasonable, yeah. actually identifiable, though, because they were just like, look, if you're a member of the clan, that that's it. <laughs> like, that's how you get kicked out. Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, that's fair. Whereas, but even they can take their pillowcases off and, and, and hide. Yeah, but you can also see the aspect here of uh, the fact they're going for the military and the police. And it's because they know the kind of people who sign up for the military and the police are not lunatic leftists. Mm. Like, they're patriotic people. And their worry, and the reason I think they want to do this as well, is to purge those kind of people. Yeah, I very much agree with that. And uh, as you suggested earlier, um, from a Democrat's perspective, what could be white supremacy? Well, flying an American flag. Yeah. I mean, they, they say America is white supremacist. Well, supporting America means you're a white supremacist. Maybe voting for Trump in a prior election makes you a white supremacist. So, yeah, it's ridiculously politically partisan, isn't it? Um, in, the number, in the case of police in particular, perhaps... Their arrest record has a disproportionate number of non-white people. Well, if this is applied and they have to adhere to these rules, maybe there's going to be this sort of dystopia where the police let certain groups run riot because they've met their arrest quota for certain demographic groups. It's, I mean, this is obviously terrible legislation. I mean, we'd be able to have a normal debate if it wasn't for the absolute state of the Dems, which they've just become something insane mm -hmm. with the fact that they've decided to view all of society through a racial lens, through critical race theory, and I've now obviously decided that everything in the West is white mm -hmm. supremacy. But let's look at the police in particular to see how this can make 
an already bad situation for them even worse. So um, it's, it's worth mentioning that I'm really surprised anyone's still a police officer in America because they are treated so poorly um, in the past few years in particular. Like They are really just assaulted from all sides, aren't they? Yeah. I, mean, I mean, sometimes in, in isolated cases that they are doing bad things, but nine, nine out of ten times, they, they they're not really... The bus. Yeah, exactly. Um, there's also the point as well um, that in the case of the police in particular, isn't that going to stretch their resources if they're having to look for all of these signs that they're secretly a white supremacist or secretly a neo-Nazi? Well, well, surely they're already stretched for their budget. Well, what will happen is they'll end up like our police force, which endlessly obsesses over these things and turns mm -hmm. into a totalitarian police force that will knock on your door for, well, thoughts that you've had. As with Harry Miller, we need to check your thinking. I mean, that was literally what they said to him. Yeah, it's, it's a dystopian sort of bureaucracy police force. That's, that's more what they have become in Britain. They don't deal with violent time. crime. They're, they're there with a clipboard checking your thinking, which is not what you want out of a police force, obviously. So yes, let's look at um, how this is going to make the um, exodus of the police force so much worse. Um, Connor, of course, pointed out to me that there were recently vaccine mandates introduced to the police, which meant that lots of police left the police force in the first place, um, which this further politicization obviously isn't going to help. Um, there is, of course, um, the exodus of police after the political response in support of all of the race riots in 2020 in support of uh, St. George Floyd, who can do no wrong, hallowed be thy name. Um, obviously, <laughs> the treatment of his um, evil murderer, Officer Fentanyl, oh, sorry, Derek Chauvin, um, discouraged a lot of police to remain in the force as well because um, they realised the department will throw them under the bus to be prosecuted by the iron knee of the law. So if you can cast your minds back to the actual video of the arrest um, of Floyd, he obviously refused to get into the vehicle. He asked to be held on the ground where he tried to kick officers. They then restrained him because he refused to get into the vehicle. He was assaulting them um, and he was a big guy, like six foot something. So they had to use a lot of people. Um, this is where, obviously, Derek Chauvin employed the renowned knee, um, which, of course, he was taught to do by his police department as a technique for restraining people. This was in the courtroom? Yes. Um, and, I mean, if this was a wrongful police killing, which I don't agree it was, um, surely the person who trained him should be the person culpable because they were the one that taught him this technique that was supposedly dangerous, and he just employed it. Well, that's just doing what he's taught. And I know just following orders isn't exactly a good defence, but in this case, I mean, they've trained him deliberately to do this job and he does something that he's been trained to do and then he gets punished for it. That seems wrong to me and I think that that's the perspective that a lot of police officers have as well, is that, well, why am I going to uh, do this job when at any opportunity my department's going to throw me under the bus, prosecute me and treat me like a sacrificial lamb and offer me up to the altar of progressive politics um, with the aim of kind of trying to sate them and stop them leaving American cities as charred embers. I mean, it's, it's appalling that, that this all happened. And they're not going to help their situation with all of the police leaving because they're further politicising them. They're going to recognise that. Further people are going to leave. And you're going to have anarchy on the streets, aren't you? You're not going oh. to have any police whatsoever, so eventually. Yeah, I'm almost kind of supportive of that, to be frank. Because... <laughs> you're on the defund the police line of, yeah, of thinking? Yeah, in these Democrat cities, right, if that's what you want, Enjoy. We'll corner you off and you can live in your little playpen in which everyone's just going to end up killing each other. Mm -hmm. It's like, right. And then once you've rehabilitated yourselves into, oh, wait, policing might not be evil mm -hmm. because I might want to live, then, then you can come back and join the rest of the world. But yeah. And just to show that I'm not um, pulling these, these figures out of my behind, here is an article from Forbes talking about a study. Um, um, and the article is titled, Historic Police Exodus in Cities Most Impacted by Racial Justice unrest new data shows. So yes, the data is there. The police are leaving in these cities where all of these protests were going on. I mean, I believe we went through this uh, with Carl, and it's the specific areas in which those race riots took place, and then the police forces decided, okay, what we should do is stand with the rioters. And then the officers were like, okay, well, I'm retiring early. And, well, yeah. been like and who can blame them? It's, it's undermining their their life's work if they've been in the force for a long time. So every one of those cities that is basically becoming a playpen for just an experiment mm -hmm. here, like they're the ones with the dips in the ability to police themselves. Yeah, and these cities realised that when they did defund the police and throw them under the bus, well, funnily enough, crime skyrockets, as this next article shows from Fox. Um, 
Major cities refund the police as crime skyrockets and businesses backfire. So yes, um, this is from June of last year. The article reads, One year after the movement to defund the police saw cities slash budgets and cut funding, the US has seen an uptick in crime. Homicides are alone are up 24% since January, and more than 70% of people in a recent Fox News poll said they believe crime is on the rise nationally. Um, and it's also worth mentioning in here, and to mention a specific case, the city of Baltimore reversed its efforts to cut its police budget by 22 million in 2020 by proposing a 27 million increase in 2021. So they actually increased the budget by 5 million after cutting it. Because they realise how badly... Well, yes. <laughs> it's, it's obviously stupid. If you cut funding to the police, there is more crime. I mean, you could have asked a child that, but apparently, apparently not. So yes, let's have a little, little bit more of a high-resolution view um, of a more recent article. This is... Um, from the 11th of June, 2022. Um, this is talking about the New York Police Department exodus. Um, and they talk about all the factors in which police are being pushed out of the police force, which are mostly political, which this bill is certainly not going to help. So more than 1,500 NYPD officers have either resigned or retired so far this year, on pace to be the biggest exodus of officers since statistics have been available, the Post has learned. Some 524 cops have now resigned and 1,072 have retired as of the 31st of May. Um, NYPD pension stats obtained by the Post show. The 1,596 total is a 38% spike from the same period in 2021, which is already quite high if you remember, uh, when 1,159 cops called in it a career and a staggering 46% climb from 2020 when it was uh, 1,092 leaving the force uh, at the same date. Anti-cop hostility, bail reform, the rising crime have uh, fed into frustrations among NYPD rank and file. According to one NYPD officer who recently fled for greener pastures, that's a Long, um, Long Island Police Department after six and a half years with New York's finest, the city is out of control, especially since bail reform, according to the former Queens cop who asked to identify, uh, be identified sorry, only as Joe. The mantra now is, get out while you still can. Joe's patrol gig got worse and worse over time, he said. Um, the last few years, so many people have been leaving and the manpower was so low that you would go to work and you would answer 25 to 30 jobs a day and you would be burnt out by the end of the day, he said, adding, there was no time for law enforcement because it would be radio run, radio run, radio run all day long. And I think bills like this are going to make their job worse, make it more difficult because they're adding more politicisation and they're preventing them from actually doing their jobs or policing, keeping law and order, arresting violent criminals, you know, the important stuff that everyone recognised as important only a few years ago. As you say, a few years ago. It's important for us. Whereas yes. if what's important to you is instead just ideological control, mm -hmm. well, then happily purge them. So yes, this is a bill that has kind of flown under the radar a little bit and I wanted to draw attention to it because it's going to make America's streets far more dangerous. If you appreciated that segment from the podcast of the Lotus Eaters, you can go to lotuseaters.com to get access to all the premium content we have on the site, such as the Epoch series, this one about Ethelstan, the king of the Anglo-Saxons and maybe the first king of England. If you want to follow what else we're putting out, you can follow us on Getter at lotuseaters underscore com on Getter. Thank you and goodbye.